I laughed, I cried, I cringed, I died, and so much more. <music> Greetings, and welcome back to Here's What I Heard. I'm Laura Degatis, your hostess. Thank you for clicking on my little acre of the internet today. I keep hearing bits and pieces about Mr. Chappelle's latest show on the Capital N channel. So I broke down and checked it out just to see for myself, like I always will, before I speak on the subject. Like I've said before, I do listen to other people's opinions. I just don't base my opinions or my actions on what others say. And... The folks that were doing the most screaming about needing Dave and his special to be canceled made me want to see for myself what all the screaming was about, even more so. I even have a little personal story to tell you about Twitter. You'll love it. At least you'll think it's ironic. I know I did. But before I get into all of that, I'm going live, coming up December the 2nd, 7 p.m. Central. I'm calling the series Talk To Me America. My call-in talk show will feature you. Call in and tell the universe how you feel about the topics that affect us the most. Let us know what your experience was when things we see happening have happened to you. We cannot be free without the freedom of speech, and I want to be a part of that freedom that we are guaranteed by our Creator. So stay tuned and get your voices ready to speak out. Spread the news and stay tuned for Here's What I Heard's Talk To Me America series coming up December the 2nd, 7 p.m. Central. In the meantime, please give us a like, a share, a subscribe, and a comment. You will be doing this on my call-in talk show, so start letting me know what you heard now in the comments. The best comments and the best phone calls will be featured in my videos all over the internet. The world wants to hear what you have to say, so call me and tell them like it is. A donation would be the ultimate and will help me get your voice out on as many platforms as possible. And you can follow me on those other platforms too. All of my links are below. Click on some of them, will ya? Now, I have always loved Dave Chappelle. His show was hilarious. His comedy always seemed to be on point, if you ask me. He has lifted very many entertainers into notoriety as well. And from what little I know of him personally, he seems to not take himself very seriously either. Dave Chappelle even walked away from a $50 million deal because he would have had to have signed his life away by being untrue to himself and his standards of freedom. You have to admire somebody like that. In my opinion, he's always been the storyteller that we never knew that we needed. Especially now. A virtual modern day successful spinner of yarns, if you will. Oh! Oh! I'm telling you. The player haters ball gives us an opportunity to hate on a diverse array of mock-ass mocks. We're looking for Clayton Bigsby. Well, look no further, fella. You found me. Samuel Jackson, <laughs> made painstakingly by me, Samuel Jackson. It'll get you drunk. What's up? You can live here and record here. Good evening, I'm Chuck Taylor. It's been a very busy day in the news. And we stand and looking at him. He's looking right in our eyes. Now, after viewing his latest show, I really love his work even more. And him too. He gives his opinions comedically, but I have never ever heard him tell anyone what they should be doing or saying or thinking. He's even secure enough in himself and his work to say stuff like this. It's art. And you're free to interpret this art however you'd like. We need more of this kind of celebrity folks these days. The I'm going to say what I say or create what I create and you can't stop me or cancel me types. And if you try, you will only be making me stronger and proving my performances are verifying your hypocrisy. 
In this particular body of work, these were a few of the most profound things that I think I've ever heard. I'm not indifferent to people suffering because I know it's hard to be everybody. Why is it easier for Bruce Jenner to change his gender than it is for Cassius Clay to change his name? Gender is a fact. Gender is a fact. This is a fact. Every human being in this room, every human being on Earth, had to pass through the legs of a woman to be on Earth. That is a fact. Punching down on someone requires you to think less of them. Twitter's not a real place. I think that some of these phrases send more of a signal to the average person about freedom than any celebrity telling you how they're going to be responsible and then go on to explain how bad you are if you don't either agree with them or worship them or worship their protected people. Meanwhile, they stomp on your speech and other rights as well. Now, in my opinion, Chappelle seems to have what I like to call Dilly Gaff Syndrome. That's D-I-L-L-I-G-A-F. Dilly Gaff. Now, I know a lot about this syndrome because when it comes to what people think of me of my opinions, I have the same syndrome. If you don't pay my bills or feed me, your opinion of me will go in one ear and out the other. Actually, even if you are doing those things, the same will probably apply. So when you get all in your feelings about my opinion and you start freaking out and calling names, I walk. You talk to the hand, my friend, because one, I don't have to put up with your shit. Nobody does. And two, which is actually more important, well, let's just say I'm like a honey badger and I have dilly gaff syndrome. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not a heartless beast or anything like that. I give tons of chances, but when I'm done, I'm done and there ain't no going back. I don't care how hard you try. I know that that may sound very cold to you. Some of you, maybe. But just how long is someone supposed to allow someone else to abuse you before you just say enough? And how many times did that same person have to show you who they really are before you actually see it? Now, I usually won't say much. You'll just start to see me around less and less. And if you're on social media, quick, quick. bye. Sorry, I keep getting distracted here. He did talk about a lot of things probably most of which I won't cover. I don't want to spoil the whole thing for you. Anyway, Dave started out with a pretty sweet sentiment. He's not heartless either, from what we can tell. Mentioning how badly he felt, which is pretty much all he can do. For folks that don't have his money and fame while dealing with this fiasco of a pandemic for the last two years now. I wonder how long this predicament has to last before the money runs out for the rich and famous too. But again, don't get me distracted. He seems to be making this a message to the people who insist we accept and applaud them their alternative lifestyles. But being the sarcastic joker he is also proved his point about their reactions and demands as well. He's like, hey man, we're all just having a human experience. Just recognize that and move on. He even admitted that he learned from a trans person whom he was practically best friends with and became yet another victim of his uplifting, talented performers. People don't want to be understood. They want to be accepted as they are. The whole crowd kind of gasped. And I gave the fight club. I said, I believe you, bitch. Because she didn't say anything about pronouns. She didn't say anything about me being in trouble. She said, just believe I'm a person and I'm going through it. You know, I believe you because it takes one to know one. Unfortunately, the ending of that story was tragic, but I still took more out of it than just that. It was him learning something about himself, but most importantly, making that person's end just a little less tragic due to someone like Dave giving a shit enough to get to know that person, especially since they were a loyal fan and then learning from them. 
That is real life. How many other celebrities do you know will befriend their loyal fans like that or even try to pass on the privileges afforded by being in the public eye as such? To me, especially in this particular episode, Dave's storytelling was quite mesmerizing. He was funny in all the right places, he was suspenseful just where it counted the most, and he was whop, bang, boom, pow, surprising when folks least expected it. I felt like as if we were following a very exciting, realistic story or even a movie plot that actually made sense. Best part of his show, in my opinion? Thank you very much and good night. This was after he covered everything and literally showing us what these folks are really like when they claim that their chips are down. Now, I didn't get all the jokes. I'm not surprised being that this particular show seemed way more personal to Dave than the others that I've experienced. And of course, I'm not him or anything like him. So my experiences won't be the same. I won't understand everything that he talks about. I do, however, agree with his assessment of real life. Every human being in this room, every human being on earth, had to pass through the legs of a woman to be on earth. That is a fact. And even more so with his assessment of Twitter. Twitter's not a real place. Which brings me to my personal experience with Twitter story that I promised you earlier. Now, I know that most of you will find this very hard to believe. But I was around when Twitter first started and was one of the first people on Twitter, actually. It was originally touted as a place to network and sell your wares and show people your store and your products, things like that. A place where you could talk about anything and talk to anyone, even celebrities who were way too untouchable before the internet and social media. Yeah, people talked about all kinds of stuff there too, but there was always some link to merchandise or some other point of interest, at least all the folks that I followed had that anyway, including the celebrities. However, I actually got banned from Twitter almost immediately for, are you sitting down? Are you sitting down? Requesting too many friends. Wait, isn't that or wasn't that the purpose of Twitter? To like get friends and trade ideas and likes around the world? Needless to say, I turned my back on Twitter after that. I mean, how real can a social media platform be that bans you for being social? I haven't looked back since, and it's been one of the best social media decisions I've ever made in my life. Besides that, I don't really need to be on Twitter to see what's on Twitter. All everyone ever does is talk about Twitter. See, I'm even talking about it now. It actually seems like more people talk about Twitter more now that some folks have been banned than ever before. Just look at how much Project Veritas trends and they're not even on Twitter anymore. And I don't know that from being on Twitter. Remember the main rule of show business and celebrity that I keep talking about? You know, the no publicity is bad publicity and the no publicity is bad publicity. That rule seems to be working no matter the person, place, or thing. Hmm. So, to sum everything up in one little nutshell, Dave Chappelle is awesome, even though I don't agree with everything he says, but that's okay, and that is what his point is. And SJWs, especially the ones on Twitter, suck. <laughs> Bye. I do hope you enjoyed my video today. Don't forget, I'm going live coming up on December the 2nd, 7 p.m. Central Time, 5 p.m. avocado time. Talk to me, America. Let the universe hear what you heard. Free speech for all. So give us a like, a subscribe, share, and let us know what you heard. 
a donation would be the ultimate, and you can follow me on several other platforms. Some will even have exclusives from time to time. All my links are below. Click on some of them, will ya? Thank you for clicking on my little acre of the internet today. Until next time!